During the United States' withdrawal from Afghanistan and the Taliban's return to Kabul, on the one hand, the Chinese Communist Party, or the CCP, derided and attacked the U.S. On the other hand, it launched the war of propaganda and military deterrence against Taiwan. Tsai Ing-wen also said, if we ourselves don't do anything and only rely on the protection from others, it is not an option for our Taiwan. Su Sang Chang, the premier of the Republic of China, also stated on August 17th that the live lesson from Afghanistan is that there is no way to get help from outside if there is an internal chaos. Only if the people help themselves can others help. Taiwanese people must be resolute in our sovereignty and believe only if we defend our land, then no one else can attack or swallow it. Starting at 8 a.m. on August 8th, the Chinese military began its three consecutive days of military drills in the South China Sea. The day before, warships, anti-submarine aircraft, and fighter jets had been dispatched from China's eastern combat area. China also carried out drills of joint fire assault on the sea and in airspace around the southwest and southeast of Taiwan Island. The CCP continues to use force to harass Taiwan sea and airspace, as well as media threats, which has increased the tension on both sides of the Taiwan Strait. According to the statistics from the Ministry of National Defense of the Republic of China, up to August 17th, the number of CCP military aircraft disturbances around Taiwan was as high as 393 times. This has hit a new annual record. The city across the Taiwan Strait is the Xiamen City of China. The Emergency Management Bureau of Xiamen issued a document on August 13th that required citizens to store necessary emergency supplies and listed the Basic Material Reserves Recommendation List with a Supplement Recommendation List of 67 Material Reserves. Many analysts believe that the Chinese government issued such documents during this sensitive period particularly in Xiamen, which has been regarded as the front line of confrontation of the Taiwan Strait. People can't help thinking about what's next. As seen from the increasingly radical practices of the CCP over the past few years, its attempt to take risks in the Taiwan Strait cannot be underestimated. The fall of Afghanistan has shown an opportunity to the CCP. Since January 2021, the CCP has frequently issued so-called household emergency supply reserve lists in Guangzhou City, Zhejiang Province, Shanghai, and other southeast coastal areas. According to the Ministry of Emergency Management, this is to improve the people's ability to help themselves in emergencies. The official announcement has aroused worries among the people. Local business people responded that after the news was spread, local business community felt uneasy. If the situation in the Taiwan Strait deteriorates, what they have accumulated all their life could be taken. At the end of last year, Beijing began to vigorously promote for people to store food at home, enough to last half a year. Since then, the Ministry of Emergency Management has also promoted the storage of household and emergency supplies in various places. This is reminiscent of the Mao Zedong era from the last century, which is a serious version of that combat readiness of, quote, digging deep caves and accumulating more grain. It is reasonable to believe that the recent CCP's military drills are aimed at attacking Taiwan psychologically on the one hand and testing the United States on the other hand. Recently, the Chinese Communist Party's official media, The Global Times, has published a series of articles such as Today's Afghanistan is Tomorrow's Taiwan. One of the articles states, once a cross-straits war breaks out while the mainland seizes the island with forces, the U.S. would have to have a much greater determination than it had for Afghanistan, Syria, and Vietnam if it wants to interfere. 
from what happened in Afghanistan, they should perceive that once a war breaks out in the Straits, the island's defense will collapse in hours and the U.S. military won't come to help. As a result, the DPP authorities will quickly surrender while some high-level officials may flee by plane. This is certainly a public opinion war that the CCP is launching and it is a kind of information warfare. This topic is used to attack the leadership of the United States and the current international order. On August 16th, U.S. Secretary of State Blinken and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi talked over the phone to discuss the situation in Afghanistan. Wang Yi said that the United States needs to, quote, seriously reflect, end quote, on its own failures. Shouldn't 針對美方的上述錯誤行徑,中方均予以了堅決有力的回擊,堅定捍衛自身的主權安全利益。We believe that our commitments to our allies and partners are sacrosanct and always have been. We believe our commitment to uh, Taiwan and to Israel remains as strong as it's ever been. The president said yesterday that China and Russia would love nothing more than to have the U.S. sink billions of dollars and stay here forever, but it seems to be that they're celebrating this. They were touting um, U.S. humiliation in Afghanistan and a warning to Taiwan and other allies that the U.S. won't come for help if war breaks out, China's embassy is functioning as normal. So what are we doing to uh, counter their propaganda? Well, uh, first, we, of course, are in touch with the Chinese and the Russians uh, as, we, uh, as we work to uh, bring men and women out of Afghanistan, uh, and, uh, including our SIV applicants and others. Um, our message is very clear. Uh, we stand by, uh, as is outlined in the Taiwan uh, Relations Agreement, uh, by, our, 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 by uh, individuals in Taiwan. We stand by partners uh, around the world who are subject to this kind of propaganda that Russia and China are projecting, and we're going to continue to deliver on those words with actions. An anonymous senior U.S. official talked more to Taiwan's central news agency after the meeting. The official said that the U.S. mission in Afghanistan is to deal with the terrorists who launched the 9-11 attack. After the mission was completed, they would still be stationed in Afghanistan for many years. The U.S. policy toward Taiwan focuses on peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. Regarding Taiwan, the opinions from the media in the U.S. are quite divisive. There have been several recent reports in the U.S. media that listed Taiwan as the most likely place for a nuclear war in terms of Sino-U.S. relations and called on Washington to withdraw its troops from the region and should not promise to defend Taiwan in order to avoid such a disaster. But another viewpoint is that Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan was partly due to the redeployment of American troops to East Asia, and that the CCP's aggressive behavior would only accelerate the transfer of American military power to Taiwan and strengthen the White House's determination. In other words, the current situation may be counterproductive for Beijing, because the chaotic situation in Afghanistan may prompt the Biden administration to adopt a tougher strategy against China. Both White House officials and many military experts believe that Taiwan is significantly different from Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a landlocked country. It used to be the hiding place of the terrorist bin Laden's Al-Qaeda organization. It is also the world's largest producer of drugs. The United States has spent 20 years spending USD $2.26 trillion. In 2020, Afghanistan President Ghani said that 90% of the Afghan population will live on less than USD $2 a day. Taiwan is at the center of the first island chain in the Pacific for the United States to defend against the threat of the CCP. It is also a key link in the U.S. Indo-Pacific strategy and is of great strategic significance to U.S. national security. 
As early as during the Korean War in 1950, the United States began to deploy the 7th Fleet to assist in the defense of Taiwan. The two sides have cooperated in military security for 71 years. The United States has five allies with military cooperation around Taiwan. They are all facing threats from the CCP. Any changes in the United States' commitment to Taiwan will affect the relationship between the United States and its allies in other regions. Taiwan's peace and security are closely related to the peace and survival of other countries in the Indo-Pacific region, such as Japan. The Japan Times quoted insiders on August 18th that Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party plans to hold online talks with Taiwan's ruling Democratic Progressive Party on security issues as early as this month. As the Chinese Communist Party's threat to Taiwan is growing, Japan's Liberal Democratic Party set up a project team in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in February to discuss the relationship between Japan and Taiwan. Since 2017, when Trump became President of the United States, U.S.-Taiwan relations have improved all around, reaching its best level in more than 40 years. On August 17th, Trump spoke of the implications for Taiwan in an interview with Fox News commentator Sean Hannity. Trump revealed that when Xi Jinping visited Mar-a-Lago in 2017, and I he warned Xi, Do not do anything having to do with Taiwan. Just don't do it. Trump said he gave the strong warning. The first half hour I said, do not do anything having to do with Taiwan. I know you want to, do not do it. Anyway, then the... Carver Templeman, a researcher at the Hoover Institution and part of the project on Taiwan in the Indo-Pacific, on August 17th, he tweeted regarding the differences between Afghanistan and Taiwan from many aspects. He believes that in addition to the 71-year history of military cooperation between the United States and Taiwan, Taiwan is also the 10th largest economic trade partner of the United States. The bilateral trade volume in 2019 was USD $85.5 billion, while Afghanistan ranked 105th with only $797 million. For Afghanistan, the problem is inside, while for Taiwan, the threat comes from the outside. This is the more important and crucial difference. And Taiwan is a very capable country. When the U.S. supports Taiwan, it will not involve counterinsurgency and future construction issues. In fact, Taiwan is indeed a country worthy of respect. The official name for Taiwan is the Republic of China, which was established in 1912. In 1949, the Republic of China regime retreated from mainland China to Taiwan. In 1966, when Mao Zedong, the leader of the Chinese Communist Party, launched the Cultural Revolution on the mainland that destroyed 5,000 years of Chinese traditional culture, Taiwan's leader, Chiang Kai-shek, launched the Chinese Cultural Renaissance Movement in Taiwan. The core of Chinese traditional culture is to believe in divinity. In the process of reviving traditional culture, Taiwan's leaders paid special attention to protecting the freedom of religious belief. Taiwan is the place with the highest density of religious buildings in the Chinese communities. It is also the country with the most prosperous Chinese religions. We could say that the Republic of China in Taiwan continues authentic traditional Chinese culture. The Chinese Cultural Renaissance Movement has connected China's 5,000 years of divine culture to Taiwan. At the same time, Taiwan follows the capitalist system and universal values such as democracy, freedom, and the rule of law, and human rights are deeply rooted in the hearts of the people. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic spread from Wuhan to the world and hit the world economy severely. Taiwan has become a world model in terms of epidemic prevention and control, and its economic performance is outstanding, ranking first among the four Asian tigers. On August 18th, Taiwan Vice President Lai Ching-de delivered a speech at the 2021 Taiwan Great Future International Summit. 
He said in the first half of this year, Taiwan's economic growth was estimated to be 8.19%. Taiwan's leaders are trying to build Taiwan into the centers of high-level manufacturing, high-tech research and development, advanced semiconductor producing, etc., to increase Taiwan's influence in the key position of the global industrial chain. So how do the people of Taiwan view the threat of war from the CCP? The CCP calls people from Taiwan Chinese to show that China owns Taiwan, but polls show that people in Taiwan call themselves Taiwanese rather than Chinese. That way of identifying themselves has climbed from 13.5% in 1997 to 83.2% in February 2020. On August 10th, the Taiwan Constitutional Foundation released a public opinion survey that showed that 89.9% of the people considered themselves to be Taiwanese. When asked if they would like to go to the battlefield to protect Taiwan if there is a war, 36 said they will, 23% said they should, 16.2% said they would not, 12.1% said they certainly would not, and 7.4% said they have no opinion. Therefore, the percentage of willing to go to the battlefield exceeds 64%.